Yo, what up, Street Talks? There, Kim. All right, so the thought. Why I have zero tolerance towards domestic abuse. So this is just based on my own personal life story. So certainly one of the greatest injustices that happens in America and the world is uh, domestic abuse, whether physical or violent, uh, physical or mental. And uh, I personally experienced it with um, you know my personal family, my mom, my dad. So. Uh, all, all, long story short, my mom is pretty much a saint. My dad's like, you know, probably the most, mm, kind of the, the anti-me. So essentially in my personal uh, behaviors and activities, I just try to do everything opposite of my dad and I think I become a, a good person. But anyways, so the problem in Asian American communities is that Violence against women is is normalized, which means, you know, it's all considered a private matter. And you know, like there's like even when they're kids, we always kind of joke that like uh, our parents, you know, like typically in like Asian cultures, you know, you parents beat the kids, it's not that big of a deal. And <clears throat> whereas in America, you're not allowed to put touch a finger on your kids, but that's that's another dis discussion. So in Asia, you know, I can't speak for all Asians, but certainly within. Korean <coughs> Confucian societies. The problem is women are essentially the slaves of the men. And you know, the stereotype that men are aggressive towards the women, it actually does hold some sort of uh, truth in the sense that uh, traditionally in Confucian societies, women are the slave of the man. And yeah, so what happened in my case? My, what happened in my case was, and this is actually like where I'm actually like very grateful the, the police got involved where, you know, you could just Google it, just search Eric Kim scars and you could hear my, hear my story. But the basic skinny of it is my dad's the asshole and he's like totally verbally and mentally and physically abusing my mom. And my dad called the, the cops on my mom ironically enough because actually what happened was my mom just got so crazed, she actually did try to stab my dad. And as a consequence, uh, my dad is like, you know, he, he called the, he called the, the cops and it's like, ha ha, you stupid bitch, you know, now I'm going to lock you away for good. But the, the poetic justice of the whole thing was when the, the cops came, they interviewed me and my sister, they actually found that my dad was the, the, the violent, culprit person and actually uh, handcuffed my dad and took him away to uh, to prison or jail or whatever you have it and you know after that my mom was able to get a restraining order on my dad and you know things things worked out pretty good so it's kind of crazy because when you're a woman you know this is just me talking about my experiences with my mom is that you know, my mom was in a bad position where, you know, her being a good Christian, she's actually not allowed to speak up against uh, her situation. And violence against women is normalized, right? And then it's, it's kind of like supposed to be um, a private matter, which means she really couldn't turn to nobody. And even this is where I'm quite an anti-Christian morality in the sense that uh, you know, she told her friends and family about getting beat, you know, verbally and physically and and actually everyone including the pastor encouraged to forgive my dad and I'm like, dude, this guy's like a re re reprehensible individual and for me as a as a kid and this is where like my dad exerted power over me is because I didn't I didn't know my Korean ability wasn't so good so I could never really fight back against my my dad and my only personal regret is I might have, I wish I exerted more of my physical force to protect my mom against my dad. Cause actually like the whole time my dad's like kind of like this like skinny fat, weak, weak, weak guy, right? But it's kind of the psychological blackmailing which kind of held back my mom and also held me, held me back. But anyways, so I almost wish that I was able to stand up for my mom and it's, it's, you know, obviously I can't blame myself because I'm just a kid, but certainly now that I'm in a position where, you know, I'm in a position of power, I could advocate for other 
kids or families with uh, domestic abuse. So, some propositions. So first and foremost, like, yeah, obviously there's sometimes where the, the, there's domestic abuse of the woman against the man, but these are so rare and far in between. It seems like the logical thing to do is obviously to assume that the, the male is a sus suspect. I mean, I think that seems quite logical. So whenever in doubt, give more credence to the woman than the, the man. And, you know, certainly there, there is a possibility that the woman is lying. I mean, that's it's a possibility, but the likelihood of it is so little. I almost feel like we should certainly, like, it's like a weighted averages, right? And this is where, like, having judges and courts and having judges with wisdom is kind of a good thing because, you know, there's always going to be nuance in terms of everything. And actually, when in doubt, just, like, ask the kids, like, you know, ask, because, you know, as kids, you don't, you, you know what's up. So that's actually why the when the cops interviewed me and my sister, we essentially told them that my dad was abusive to my mom the whole time and my mom was the innocent one and my dad was the culprit. And therefore, thank God, he, you know, handcuffed my dad and put him off. So that's where I think notions of, like, I think the bias right now is that, like, all cops are evil, which I think is is totally false. Like, even um, my co uh, coach, uh, one of my coaches growing up, you know, he was, he worked in the Oakland PD, you know, Chinese American, and he actually ended up serving, like, kind of my, my Zen Roshi master. And, you know, he's a cop, so I, you know, he, he, he treated me like his own child, so I actually saw cops as, like, kind of heroes or, you know, and then all my friends who are like, you know, it's like, fuck the cops. I, I could never say that in a good conscience because, uh, for me, growing up as a kid, the cops were my protectors and my heroes. And actually, when they took away my dad, I was so, so grateful. But anyways, um, so, yeah, towards the, and you know, I think this happens mostly in the immigrant communities where uh, violence against women by men is uh, kind of the norm. And Asian, Asian American immigrants or, you know, Asian immigrants can't speak up because they're afraid of being ostracized by the family, the community, and even the Asian American like church community, I think actually does, doesn't really encourage people to speak up. And so, yeah, like my, my personal thought is, at least here in the States, in America, we should have a zero tolerance policy between physical and emotional and mental abuse against women. And we use everything in our power uh, to protect the women, uh, protect the kids, and um, prosecute the, the men to the fullest potential possible.